Hey everyone, it's Dave. Thanks for tuning into the channel. As always, today we have some space industry updates for you. There's been a lot going on over the past weeks, and we're here to round up all the important information for space investors and enthusiasts. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you will consider doing that by the end of the video. Every new subscriber is very much appreciated, and all those likes really help out if you are a current subscriber. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's dive into this week's space industry updates. And our first story is it's a bit of a revenge of the SPACs or the SPACs strike back this week as basically for the past couple years, every single space SPAC has had a really rough time on the public markets, dropping significantly from where they went public as the speculation really seems to take hold when these SPACs hit the open market. However, a couple of them finally seem to be striking back and showing that yes, they can be legitimate investments and legitimate companies and their stocks have been performing well. First of all, Redwire, I did talk about them in a previous video. They had some earnings come out this past week that were pretty Pretty well received. In my video, I did say that the stock was starting to look quite cheap and I thought it was looking like a good investment. Uh, of course, I didn't actually end up buying and I missed out on a big move. Uh, so yeah, I get, well, that's what happens when you don't have any capital free. But nevertheless, I think it's great for the space industry to see a company executing and it does look like there are brighter days ahead for red wire spire as well has had quite a big week we can see the move here in the stock the first leg up was a result of their earnings which were also quite positive overall and well received by investors and then we had a massive spike as well on news that they announced a partnership with nvidia the collaboration was to advance ai driven weather prediction through this collaboration Spire's radio occultation data and proprietary data assimilation capabilities will be integrated with NVIDIA Earth2 cloud APIs to leverage AI to accelerate climate and weather prediction. And sorry, what's that? Guys, I'm hearing from the producer that we do have a video of the Wall Street analysts when they heard Spire say the word AI. Let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just seems like any company that says AI, you know, the stock runs wild. So congratulations to Spire. However, taking advantage of that price movement, that sharp rise, they did decide to raise capital at a higher valuation. So they announced that they entered into securities purchase agreements with two institutional investors for the purchase and sale of over 2 million shares of Class A common stock. Purchase price of $14 per share. The gross proceeds approximately $30 million before fees and commissions and all that. So that obviously was the cause of the sharp move back down as investors were, you know, not too pleased with the dilution coming with that share offering. But hey, you know, if I was an investor at the $7 range just a week ago, and I was told that the company was going to be able to raise additional capital at a valuation of $14 per share, I would absolutely take it. And uh, I think space is a expensive business and nothing wrong with raising more capital. So things are looking on the up for Aspire overall. If you ask me, this company has turned things around and they are definitely one to watch for the future in the Earth observation space. Okay, next up, I know you all are Rocket Lab fans here on the channel, so I did want to cover them. They obviously had this successful mission for the National Recon Office in Wallops, Virginia. This one, you know, pretty classified. We don't have a ton of details on it, but glad to see that they were successfully able to launch out of Virginia. And that makes four launches in Q1 for Rocket Lab, a very strong quarter for Electron after a pretty tough 2023 where they did have that anomaly and the resulting, uh, you know, hit to their launch cadence. Continuing on with Rocket Lab, there was a conference where Adam Spice attended looking like a pirate as he <laughs> did have a uh, eye patch on. I guess he's got some kind of eye issue. You can check out the full conference on Rocket Lab's investor relations website, but there were a few interesting takeaways. Sounds like they're looking at more like April or May now for the static fire of the Archimedes engine, whereas before we were looking maybe end of March. So a uh, little bit of bad news on the Archimedes front. They still say they think they can get to year end 
you know, potentially getting the rocket to the pad. So we'll have to see on that one. Everything else sounds pretty good about the company. He did say that he doesn't think they will go into broadband in terms of their own constellation and competing with Starlink on the open market. So that's something a lot of us had speculated about. Still remains to be seen what their final end application is, something we're all watching for very closely. Varda, the customer for Rocket Lab, who did have that space factory capsule re-enter Earth's atmosphere not too long ago, announced that the results were successful and the hardware performed flawlessly. So congratulations to Varda and Rocket Lab for a successful mission. Hopefully we'll see some more capsules going up in the future now that they've got the first one down in the bag. And then we got some pretty cool pictures from Rocket Lab on Twitter as well. This one, obviously, they're highlighting their electron down in the bottom, ready to go to orbit. But a lot of us were actually more interested in the background, which is where Neutron's launch infrastructure is beginning to take shape. And we also got some more close-up pictures of that in separate tweets. So on this thread here, we can see the water tower getting ready to take shape for Neutron. They have some footings here, concrete footings for infrastructure. And obviously there's been a lot of land grading taking place as well as some paving going on in other vid pictures here. We can see the concrete pouring for that launch infrastructure. So exciting to see some updates from Rocket Lab, and of course they do have a five minute drive away, the integration facility for Neutron. It looks pretty bare right now, it's got this big tent structure. Uh, haven't seen too much action here, but it looks like they've got some work underway with some more footings here and land clearing, so maybe that integration facility is starting to ramp up as well. Oh, by the way, I did just want to share Adam Spice here on the right in his best pirate impersonation. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff at the 2024 Satellite Conference and Exhibition. By the way, we did get some exciting news from Firefly and Northrop Grumman. They've finally released some details on their medium launch vehicle, kind of the next gen building off of the Antares rocket architecture. This will be a direct competitor to Neutron actually launching right next door to where Neutron's launching. And we got some interesting information. Obviously, the fairing size is always interesting in terms of how much payload it can physically store. But the information in terms of payload performance also quite interesting. We're looking at around 6,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit and probably in reusable mode, more like 13 for Neutron. So very comparable. This one slightly more performance, probably because it is not being reused and every single rocket is exp expended. So exciting to get some details on this and we're going to see these two going head to head right next to each other. I do like Neutron's chances with that first stage reuse but exciting to see this rocket shape up as well. Firefly also did share a video of their Miranda engine hot firing successfully. Uh, so that's another company with their engines being hot fired while we're still waiting on Archimedes. Um, yeah, really just keen to see that Archimedes hot fire maybe towards the ends of May. Intuitive Machines did as well release their quarterly results, which seem to be generally positive, and another SPAC where the stock has performed well of late off the back of their lunar mission and then subsequent earnings. Although there was some concerns, we did find out that at the end of Q4, they had only $5 million in the bank, which is extremely low amounts of liquidity. Uh, right now, looking better, though, they have a cash balance of 50 $4.6 million, the largest balance relative to any quarter end since the company went public, primarily driven by warrant exercises from an institutional investor. So they do seem to be on a much better financial footing right now, but they were in quite a precarious position apparently not too long ago. Backlog has also nearly doubled 
driven by the OMS three task orders and International Space Agency Lunar Payload and the Department of Defense Air Research Laboratory Award. They're also going to be looking to hear news about a potential award for a lunar rover. This will just be a study on the feasibility of it, but they are working with other companies to submit a proposal to NASA for that. So look for that news coming shortly as well. And as you can see from the chart here, it has been quite a wild ride for Intuitive Machines, but generally up, so that's great for them. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm loving seeing some other space companies starting to look like they're more financially secure, starting to look in a better place. I think it's great for space investors to have more options, more companies to look at. And obviously, you know, this helps for Rocket Lab as well, showing that SPACs can perform well, and it's not always a four-letter word that means a company is about to go out of business. Some news of note from Raytheon as well. This is a big prime uh, satellite manufacturer who develops a lot of spacecraft. They're one of the kind of old school companies that you think of for these Department of Defense and Air Force Space Force contracts. So they are having their SDA tracking layer tranche one satellites reevaluated, and it sounds like they are not going to be built anymore. SDA is reevaluating and considering rescoping Raytheon's Tranch 1 tracking layer work. They would not comment on the specifics of why Raytheon will not be delivering seven satellites that the company was expected to build under a $250 million SDA award in March 2023. Now remember, SDA, this is that big contract Rocket Lab has gotten as well. So there's been some speculation on whether these satellites would be recontracted to another provider, although the SDA has said that they do believe they can operate successfully just losing seven of them from their constellation. Industry sources did say that the issue appears to be that the $250 million contract, which is a fixed price agreement, committing the supplier to a set cost would put Raytheon at risk of having to absorb higher than expected overruns due to increased costs. So these old school companies seem to be having trouble switching to a fixed cost basis as opposed to some of those more cost plus contracts that we've been familiar with in the past. And uh, we did cover this story briefly, but we have some news from Maxar. So first of all, it's been a rough go for Maxar lately. They did get shut down a $2 billion satellite refueling project, and the contractor Maxar was criticized for poor performance. Obviously, that's not very good for the company and losing that contract. And then just recently... Their Legion satellites, which have been delayed many years, originally I think they started back in 2017, they're announcing that after all those years of delay, Maxar is finally on the home stretch to launching the first two of these next-gen Worldview Earth Imaging Constellation satellites. Yeah, they did start developing in 2017, and they have suffered repeated setbacks. So probably a good thing for Maxar at this point that it's no longer a publicly traded company. It used to be one of the few publicly traded pure play space companies that we could follow and was actually already profitable. It did go private last year, the year before, I believe. Um, but yeah, they seem to be having a rough go of it as well of late. Also, Planet Labs, one of the new players in the Earth observation space, did announce that they are going to have a virtual event unveiling their new platform for multidimensional Earth insights. So could be an exciting event for Planet Labs. Maybe their stock will be able to take advantage of that as well and kind of catch up a little bit with Spire. It remains to be seen, but I for one will be excited to see what comes of this announcement. Uh, just a reminder, I do have a small position in Planet Labs myself, uh, nowhere near the size of Rocket Lab or some of my other positions, but it is still there. NASA and Boeing also announced that they are preparing for a Starliner crewed test flight in May. So exciting news to hopefully finally, finally see this castle, <laughs> see this capsule fly with humans aboard. Obviously the program has been a bit of a train wreck. I don't think there's any need to uh, dance around that or kind of say it politely. Um, 
massive delays, massive cost overruns. It's been bad for Boeing. It's been bad for NASA. It's been uh, rough all around. So hopefully they can get launching. But yeah, it's it's been a, a difficult program. Uh, really just, you know, hope everything goes well. I'm sure those astronauts will be safe in so much time and effort has clearly been put into this capsule at this point. Hard to imagine it not being safe, but maybe that's me just being hopeful. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Would you be willing to take a ride on Boeing's Starliner. So that's all I have for you today. News from Rocket Lab, news from Boeing, news from Spire, as well as Intuitive Machines and Redwire. We do have the SPACs striking back a little bit lately. It's nice to see. I hope some of you guys own some of those stocks. Let me know down in the comments below if you've had any gains over the past couple weeks. Always interesting to hear. Of course, Rocket Lab stock has had a little bit of a rougher run in this past week, but um, you know, I think the underlying company is still performing fine, so I don't have a lot of concerns there. Let me know if there's any other stories you think I should have covered that I missed. There's always so much going on in the space industry and especially when it comes to investors in publicly traded companies. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.